Yes. Yes, Am I li I'm live right now, correct? Okay, bye. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Chris Harshfield, District Commodore for 11th Coast Guard District Southern Region. <laughs> I wanna thank you all for attending this afternoon's event, a tribute to Dick Reinhardt. As a reminder, please keep all microphones muted and your cameras off during the presentation. Can we bow our heads for the invocation, please? We are gathered here today to celebrate the life of Richard Dick Reinhardt and his crossing over the bar. We thank you for the opportunity of knowing, loving, and learning from his infinite wisdom and direction. We ask today that you be with his family and this gathering to comfort and console us. To forever remember that through his efforts, the Coast Guard Auxiliary and the Coast Guard have made tremendous strides in service to our country and to the recreational boating public. We owe a great amount of gratitude to him and to his family for his service. May you bless us today and may we forever remember Dick's sacrifice duty and service. In your name we pray, amen. <clears throat> Dick Reinhardt was a member of Flotilla 12-5. Flotilla Commander John Carroll would like to say a few words. John? Thank you, Chris. Dick loved seamanship and was enthusiastic about promoting it to others. He was an active, he was active in the King Harbor Yacht Club administration and he promoted its recreational boating activities. Part of his passion to promote seamanship was his active involvement in the Coast Guard Auxiliary. He taught courses in boating safety, GPS, and other nautical topics. Beyond recreational boating topics, he was personally involved in the success of individual float flotilla members. He, was personally he would personally encourage new auxiliary members to take courses and become act an active contributor to the organization. As a former flotilla commander, Dick had a holistic view of the auxiliary organization. While he would function as the flotilla's information system staff officer at flotilla meetings, he would encourage members to keep up their skills and record their hours. Dick was not self-righteous, a micromanager, or one who desires to be the center of attention. He had a strategic view of how an organization should work and would gently nudge those in charge to consider various options. In my experience as a flotilla commander, he would occasionally call me to inform me of the situation and we would discuss options. Dick was a dear friend and mentor. Thank you. Thank you, John. At this time, a few comments from D Division 12's Commander, Ron Hecker. Hello, everybody. Wouldn't you expect that maybe two days before he passed, Mr. 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 Richard Reinhardt was communicating with me, giving me advice on how to deal with some of the features of Ox Data 2 and discussing his mentoring of new division and flotilla IS officers. For a man who was born before computers, he was the most knowledgeable person in our division on this subject. But it was not his technical skills that amazed me. It was his absolute devotion to carrying out the mission as part of the overall goals of the Coast Guard. He saw the big picture and where he fit into it. 
That is why Dick spent so many hours at Sector checking over incoming forms, inputting our hours, and advising us where we needed to do better. That is why he participated in so many on-the-water missions. I felt a bit embarrassed to be the division commander of someone whose service to country extended all the way back to World War II. That Dick always made me feel that it was just fine with him so long as he could continue to be of service right up to the end. He, with Jeannie, never missed a meeting, always arrived early, always provided us reports showing us how we were doing and exhorting us to do better. He and Jeannie attended all changes of watch and D-trains proudly decked out in their formal uniforms. I still have half a year left as division commander. I still need Dick Reinhardt to guide me, and he is. All I need to do is look up in the sky, and I know he's there standing watch over Division 12 and inspiring us to fulfill his decision. Goodbye, Mr. Reinhardt. Kindly show those angels how to account for their activities, and we will do our best to follow your example down here. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. From our district office in San Pedro, Coast Guard Auxiliary Affairs Specialist, Leslie Pelosi. I worked with Dick. He was a volunteer in the office. So you knew somebody was gonna do this, right? Um, worked with him as a volunteer in the director's office for 11 years. During this time, he served as DSO aides to navigation as well as information services. Um, but he, he was uh, he was just amazing. Um, when talking about my amazing office volunteers, I almost always said, and yeah, I have one gentleman who is 89, 90, whatever, you know, as the years went on. And I always said, and he is sharper than all the rest of us com combined. And it was true. He was the absolute go-to guy on gleaning any data out of Ox data. And one of the few I knew who could actually get information he wanted to out of box info as well. Whenever any of the OTOs or I would wonder, I wonder if he could pull a report with these particular statistics, we'd always preface it with, when you have the time, he'd say, yeah, let me see what I can do. Invariably, 10 minutes later, he'd come to us with a prototype of that exact requested report. There were also more than a few times when he had his teaching hat on and he'd try to tell us about how he created that report. And he would start talking about the thousands of data columns and whatever else he had to do to create the macros. And by then uh, my eyes had completely glazed over because I had no idea what he was talking about, but we'd sit and nod appreciate it, appreciative of his time, but he'd honestly lost us well before he got well, to the thousands of data columns portion. Speaking of reports and his tremendous admin skills, he's the one who compiled all the numbers for all the district awards. He assembled the district directory from providing the cover photo to the distribution list and everything between the covers. The roster to send to the DSO for the annual billing, yep, that was him too. Beyond our district, he was vital to all of 11, District 11 Coast Guard by designing the process to organize and create the PATON, Private Aids to Navigation Validation Worksheets. These worksheets created a uniform way for validation of almost 2,500 private aids throughout California and the Colorado River system. Per Mike Salzman in Alameda, Dick made such a significant footprint that his methods will be used for many years to come. Even as he was slowing down, he contacted Mr. Mike Hay in Alameda, also in Alameda, to make sure that his, his knowledge was passed down and not lost with him. But that's who Dick was, a coasty till the very end and his presence will be missed, says Mr. Salzman. Mike Hay repeated the sentiments of Mr. Salzman, adding that even as he was diagnosed with medical issues, he was engaged in transitioning his knowledge, skills, abilities, and experiences onto those of us who would carry on. 
He never flinched no matter how di dire his own circumstances were. Likewise, in our own district, he always knew when to say when, relinquishing duties a little at a time over the past couple of years while training his reliefs to carry on his amazing legacy. To put an exclamation point on this, he finally released the last of his duties five days before his passing. He was a true gentleman, friend, and shipmate. He'll be missed beyond words. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Our next speaker is our district chief of staff, Charlie Geiger. Charlie would like to share a few remembrances of Dick. Charlie? Good afternoon, Jeannie and fellow auxiliarists. It is an honor and privilege to have the opportunity to say a few words about my friend and mentor. I met Dick soon after I joined the auxiliary about 12 years ago. Dick was the go-to guy when it came to information systems. I was the SOIS for my division, and I love creating reports in OxInfo, which can be very challenging. When I got stuck, I would call Dick, and he would always say, give me a little time to play around with it. And sure enough, he would send me something that was far more than I was expecting. One of my first experiences working with Dick came soon after I was qualified as an aides to navigation verifier. As many of you know, navigation aids are primarily buoys that are anchored in specific locations off the coast to assist mariners in navigation. My job as an AIDS verifier was to go out on auxiliary boats on a patrol, find the buoys, and check for discrepancies so that the charts could be updated. Basically, I just had to verify that the buoy was where it was supposed to be and wasn't damaged. I reported to Dick, who was the DSO of navigation systems, and responsible for the collection of data from all the navigation aids in the district. Dick sent me information sheets on five buoys to check off the coast of Santa Barbara. So I contacted an auxiliary coxswain, he arranged for a crew, and we went out on a patrol to check on my assigned buoys. The coxswain piloted his boat to the area where each buoy should be, and the crew looked around and we found all five. They were exactly where they should be, and they all looked fine. I did no more and to write a few notes, notes on each sheet, and this satisfied my requirement for the year. The next day I reported to Dick and I told him that I felt a little guilty because I really didn't do anything. The coxswain drove the boat, the crew members spotted the buoys, and the coxswain gave me all the coordinates along with other information such as the depth of the water. All I did was write it down on the sheet. Dick immediately corrected me and explained in great detail how important my job was and that the mission would not have occurred if it wasn't for my initiative. By the time he was finished, I felt that I really accomplished something. I would learn over the years that this is what Dick is all about. He was always so supportive in his calm and kind way, and he never had a bad word to say about anyone. It is an honor to have had the privilege of calling Dick Reinhardt my friend and mentor. There is a saying that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, that people will never forget how you made them feel. Dick always made me feel important. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, many people will walk in and out of your life, but only true friends will leave, <coughs> excuse me, leave their footprints in your heart. Dick Reinhardt left his footprints in the hearts of many. Rest in peace, my friend. Thank you, Charlie. And now a few words from the immediate past division commander for Division 12 and a close colleague and very personal friend, Ms. Ann Chaffee. Ann? It is wonderful seeing all of your names on the participants list, all 45 people. People I haven't seen in a long time, but it shows how deep the roots of Richard Reinhardt have extended. I'm so happy that you're here today. George Richard Reinhardt was my friend and mentor. And I can say that for every member of our division. Dick was a gentleman of the greatest generation. His service in the Navy beginning in 1945 took him into World War II. 
his ability to serve, and his capacity to inspire. Wove him through our Coast Guard auxiliary when he was most needed. Since 1992, Dick's devotion to the Coast Guard was surpassed only by his devotion to Jean, his wife of 71 years, because they did everything together. Dick led and served in so many auxiliary positions, elected or appointed or just because something needed to be done. Those who worked with him and Leslie in the Dirox office know very well how his skills with the computer, his intimate knowledge of the auxiliary, and his personal gifts assisted all of us. By example and by instruction, Dick taught us the culture of the auxiliary, even as it changes. The 28 Coast Guard competencies are divided into four categories, leading self, leading others, leading change, and leading the Coast Guard. It's that leading change with which I feel most challenged. Most of us do, because even good changes are difficult. Dick helped me deal with our ongoing changes in the Coast Guard, in my work, and in life. I can remember Dick and Jeannie coming up to the Delray Yacht Club to teach all of us Marlin Spike. So they said, turn those chairs upside down. Now you've got four legs. <laughs> One of those was where we tied our knots. And Jeannie was there helping all of us when we couldn't quite get it. As well as being a teacher, Dick was a fine sailor. On the day of my QE ride to become coxswain, Dick was the captain aboard his beloved Sandpiper as our second vessel. We had some amusing events that day. I passed. Dick fell in the water. It was a challenge to see how I could handle it. We brought him safely aboard. Thank you, retired crew. Jeff Pillay, Charlie Ecker, and Bob Searles. You did well that day, bringing Dick back aboard. For every division meeting I ever attended as an FC or staff officer, as simply as a guest early on, Dick was there. Until the evening of July 27th, this last month, which was 36 hours before he crossed over the bar. I had spoken with him earlier that day as was our custom for the last several months. I mentioned the monthly, the monthly, <clears throat> I am sorry. No, I'm not sorry. If I have to catch my breath for Dick, I'm sure you're all there with me. I mentioned the monthly meeting of division that night and Dick said, well, tell them hello. And I did, and I do now again. Hello, everyone. John Maysfield wrote a well-loved poem called Sea Fever. I'd like to read that now for Dick and, and for all of his friends here today. I must down to the seas again, to the lonely sea and the sky. And all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And the wheels kick and the winds song and the white sails shaking and a gray mist on the sea's face and a gray dawn breaking. I must down to the seas again, for the call of the running tide is a wild call 
and a clear call that may not be denied. And all I ask is a windy day with the white clouds flying and the flung spray and the blown spume and the seagulls crying. I must down to the seas again, to the vagrant gypsy life, to the gull's way and the whale's way, where the wind's like a whetted knife. And all I ask is a merry yarn from a laughing fellow rover and a quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trick's over. Thank you, Anne. We would like to share some mem memorable moments with you in the following video and a song from Alfred Lord Tennyson's poem, Tossing the Bar. Sunset and evening star
Thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce Commodore Burt Blanchett. Burt. Good afternoon, everyone. I don't mean to be presumptuous and speak for Dick's family or his auxiliary family, but I would like to thank all of you for the super kind words that leave us with super great remembrances. Richard Dick Reinhardt, in my mind was a gentleman's gentleman. Never did I hear a harsh word, never a disrespectful tone. He will be truly remembered as a gentleman. He was dedicated to his family and his work, and he took pride in everything he did. And getting it done properly, he was a man of his word. There's one thing I remember him saying often when he was asked to take on a project, and that was, I'm not sure if I can do that, but I'll figure out a way. And he did. He always succeeded. If there was ever a time that you were upset about something, and not just auxiliary stuff, and needed something or someone to settle you down, you had a choice, a glass of wine or talk to Dick. In choosing Dick, he had that calming voice and a way to settle you down with his wisdom, respect, and thoughtfulness. Whereas some wines could give you a headache. I spent several social occasions with Jeannie and Dick and was always impressed with their calmness and respect for each other and all of those around them. They are both role models worth emulating. There will be many times in the future when you will be reminded of him. His, he was an inspirational fellow and too hard to forget. Enjoy those memories. Thank you, Dick, for being you. And it is a gift having known you. When Dick was born, he cried and the world rejoiced. He lived his life with kindness and respectfulness. And at his death, we all shed a tear. Recreas Gotten Pache. Let me leave you with this beautiful picture of Dick and Jeannie, taken not too, too many days ago. Thank you.
This hereby concludes the formal part of our presentation today. We want to thank everybody for coming. We will be hanging out for a little bit longer if people would like to just join in, turn your cameras on and uh, chat. Uh, please keep Dick and his family in your mind minds and prayers. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Jeannie would like to say something. I would just absolutely. I would like to thank everyone who spoke. Thank you for all of your wonderful words. I appreciate it so much. Thank you very, very much. God bless you, Jeannie. We'll all remember you and Dick. You made a great, great couple together. Thank you for being you. The floor is open now, if anybody would like to make any further comments. Jeannie Heights, Jeff Polite. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I loved Dick even after I left, resigned, or, uh, re, uh, retired from the auxiliary. I still always had the chance to call Dick and talk to him. And I remember a couple months ago when I was able to talk, um, he was more concerned with what I was doing and how I was doing than how he was, do was doing. And, uh, I just want to tell you how much I'm going to miss my friend. This is Nora. I, I just wanted to say that I'll miss Dick both seeing, you know, every meeting you come in and, and there he is and I love chatting with him, but also at King Arbor Yacht Club, just that radio room is not going to be the same without seeing Dick in there. Hello, a very moving experience for all of us. Go ahead, Ron. You know, uh, I've been working with Dick on and off for the last two or three weeks, four weeks probably on this new ox data that I don't understand at all. And I'm still a lost soul with it. I was working with Chris earlier today on it. You know, all the time I'm on this thing, how many times over the years have I asked Dick I need this report, I need that report. I could probably give you five, 150 emails that I've sent to him asking for reports. And I don't think one time in any of those times did I ever not get what I needed. And I could tell you right now that this auxiliary, this division would be nowhere where it is today without Dick being at the helm like he has been for these years. I also worked down at Dye Rocks with uh, Dick and uh, he's always there. He's, he's, he was part of Dye Rocks. I mean, that's part of, part of being there. It's, it's amazing. 
I have learned so much, so much in the last two years. I really appreciate it. And he will be missed in my end. I can assure you of that. Bye, Dick. Trisha, this is Anne. Can you hear me? I hope. Yes. Um, I wanted to say that Trisha, their daughter, drove over from Arizona and uh, was there with Dick in his last days and hours. Um, much comfort to Jean. I had just finished my church staff meeting when I called them on that Wednesday. And Tricia said that within the last 10 minutes, her father had crossed the bar. I talked to several people immediately. My boss, Rick Abel, Chris Hashfield, Scott Headbloom, because I said, Scott, could you put together just a couple of slides? We want to do this kind of little tribute because we can't get together. And, and I know we're all feeling something. I would like to say bravo Zulu to Scott Headbloom, who did put together this video. Commodore Blanchett chose the music and somehow with Commodore Harshfield, Commodore Blanchett, Charlie Geiger, Scott Headbloom, Rick Ebel, and Jean's help and Trisha's assistance. We were able to share our feelings today as a group and I just wanna say one more time, Thanks to everyone for being here. I've written down all your names and I know where you live. Bye. Hello. I don't know if I'm speaking to the group. Uh, you're live, Scott. Hello, everyone. What a moving day. We will never forget. I want to share with everyone that the uh, long-awaited new division newsletter will be coming out probably within the uh, next week or so. Uh, there was a lot of effort to uh, put the video together. I hope people uh, were touched. It certainly moved me. Uh, the first edition of our new division newsletter. We'll have a dedication to Richard Dick Reinhardt. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. And with that, I will close today's session. We want to thank everybody for coming by. <clears throat> Have a good day and everybody be safe. Thank you. Before we go, may I, may I speak real briefly? Sure, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, Richard Horner, I'm in, in the flotilla. I, I, I didn't know Dick very well, but I knew of him. And I'm certainly inspired by all the wonderful comments I've heard, not just here tonight, but in, in the past few years. Um, I dedicated my uh, show, which will be on at 4 o'clock. I interviewed Ann. I dedicated my AM radio broadcast to Dick and um, hope that uh, people will be inspired by it. If you want to listen, it's on at four o'clock on AM 870. And Ann did a wonderful job in the interview. A very inspiring man. And I, I was really 
moved by your comment when you said he was a gentleman's gentleman, you know, a, a man that never had an unkind word to say. And, and, and that, I wrote that down and, and, and that's the inspiration I'm drawing from this because that's the kind of person I want to be. But this was very moving. And I, I hope that uh, we'll be able to get together for the dedication on base. I, I don't think they'll be doing it this year, but next year I'm, I'm certain that we'll be able to dedicate him there. Um, so this was very, very wonderful and inspiring, you know, and thanks Scott, I'm looking forward to that newsletter. Thank you.
Hello. Can anybody hear me? Anybody hear me? Hello. Yeah. Go ahead. I, yes, I uh, wanted to say um, that I'll miss him. Uh, Dick Reinhardt had a lot of patience um, when I came to him to ask him questions. He's always took the time out to explain in detail uh, what I wanted to learn or what I wanted to know. And I wanted to also thank Gene for letting him be able to um, exude his professionalism in the auxiliary to help everyone. And uh, I would like to thank her for her sacrifice for that. And I will miss uh, Mr. Reinhardt. Thank, thank you very much, Maurice. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? There's still a number of people that just don't wish to leave, Chris, but it's lovely. It's thank lovely. you all. We're waiting for the refreshments to be put out. Where's uh, Mr. Siebert at? Isn't that what he's supposed to be doing? <laughs> yeah, maybe some of our ox chefs. I don't know. Ox FSs. Yes. I want to hear more of Ann's story. <laughs> <laughs> Which part? The, the hopefully funny part. There, oh, your, qualification, your qualification God exam. Had, Dick ended up in the water. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> you know what he did? He um, Charlie Ecker had the same exact uh, vessel that Gene and Dick did. So um, Charlie had taken the helm and Dick walked forward. I don't know. I think we're getting ready to do a tow or something. I think he was getting ready to heave a messenger over. And uh, I don't know exactly how it happened, but he lost his footing <laughs> and he, he grabbed a hold of the bow pulpit and he just hung there. And then uh, he went lower into the water, his feet got wet, then his ankles got wet, then he was up to his knees. And I was a coxswain, but I said to Pelé, Jeff, you take the helm. Bob Searles and I got on the back and Charlie Ecker was driving the other boat. And somehow as a team, <laughs> we got him just before his cover floated in the water. And we brought him aboard the stern step. And I said, here, let me put this blanket around you. He said, no, 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 I'm okay. I said, Dick, I know you're okay, but I would really love for you to share this blanket. So even in those times, you know, he, he was precious, just precious. Thanks, Nora. Hey, um, Ann, it's Barb. I remember that day because we were at their dock and they were pulling out and Dick was in, at the bow and he was <clears throat> hanging from the pulpit and we were in Dawn Treader in front of the boat. You remember that, right? <laughs> and we actually backed up and he was on our swim step. And his feet were all wet. But he managed, he said, no, I'm going back on the sandpiper. He did not want to come on to oh. Dawn Treader because he right. said, don't need to get back on the sandpiper. Fine, we'll help you get back on. But I, we're all laughing at that because that was really just, what a day. Those were the fondest of memories. And, uh, you know, those were the best of times in my experience. And it's so wonderful, Barb, that you can be there today with Jeannie and Tricia. And uh, wow. Yeah. I got Eric there too. Get it. Spin around. Sean. I'm good. You want to see Eric? Yeah. Here's Eric. Hey, Eric. Eric, my darling. Now, I have a spotlight one. Jeannie here. Yeah. But Eric, it's very important that you and Barbara go into the garage before you leave today. Oh, no, we don't. And Trisha will tell you why. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the abyss. Yeah. <laughs> no, we passed by the garage and looked in and went, no. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you, Leslie.
I've lost peace. Well, thank you very much for arranging this. And Jeannie, I will be looking out for you when I know the Yacht Club will be opening soon. And I can't wait to give you a hug. Nora wants to give you a hug when the Yacht Club opens. Who's that? Nora. 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 Okay. Well, who's Nora? Nora, you know Nora Watts. Oh, Nora. <laughs> Nora what? Wait a minute. I can't remember last name. <laughs> Nora sorry. Harris Watson. Nora Harris Watson. Yeah, whatever. Watson Harris. Just Nora. Yeah, Nora. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully we're opening soon. Yeah. <laughs> I hope. Well, folks, this is Anne one more time, and I'm going to sign off. We're down to a dozen, and, and I'm going to go ahead. It's, it's hard to leave because this has been such a special time. Jeannie, I'll see you Monday morning. On Monday about noon. Coming over to she's coming over with Monday. The garage. Yeah. Gotta help you with the garage. Yes. Ron Miller and I will be or, there. Or, or, or. <laughs> okay, everyone. Chris, a thousand thanks. A thousand thanks. Bye bye. Thank you all. Bye. Uh, I am going to now close down our link. Thank you everybody for showing up. We really appreciate it. Chris, Thank thanks you. for having this. Thank Not a problem. You very much. Thanks for having this. Take care now. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.